Para mí el exilio este, representa una transformación, un movimiento, una dirección. Este, más que la nostalgia o el dolor de partir, para mí es una cuestión de tomar estos sentimientos y mirar hacia adelante, hacia una universalidad llena de movimiento y dirección. Eso para mí es el exilio. You're comfortable and you're welcome to. Sí, sí, uno, dos. En Barranquilla me quedo. That was a very complicated task, I'm not going to lie. Um, uh, it took uh, many days to figure out uh, the idea. I, I, I was already on my mind uh, with the Exilio, but exactly uh, what is Exilio and how all of these composers relate to, to the idea, because then with Caldo Music I started to think, as, as I told you before, uh, as exile about not only a physical exile, there are many forms of exile. The first composer I came to to, to think about after Calvo was Ignacio Cervantes. Uh, he's, he was a Cuban composer. He suffered a form of exile. He, he studied in Paris, but then he was forced uh, to go away from Cuba. He was a very um, avid um, as collaborator on the independence war that Cuba had against Spain. I also thought about another thing, which is a Calvo in Agua de Dios. Um, we have all of these questions about whether Agua de Dios was a place that, that was controlling people instead of really helping them. I'm trying to say that Agua de Dios as a concentration camp, even. And in the times of Cervantes in Cuba, there was a general uh, Valeriano Whaler, who also had concentration camps, that many of the of the of the people that uh, they uh, work or support the independence war, they were sent there. And I think that he really embodies that uh, um, a feeling of being um, away of your country and. Uh, you cannot do anything about it. It's a very emotional feeling that I, I think that they connect very well. So the idea came through Cervantes and from there I started to think and 
we thought about all of the composers that could relate to the idea. Ernesto Lecuona, uh, he didn't have a political exile like Cervantes, but he lived here in New York. There is a personal connection to Lecuona because he, uh, I mean, in spite of being a great composer uh, known by Stravinsky, even and Carlos Chavez, he was forced to work in cabarets and earn uh, uh, his life like any uh, um, a lot of composers from the time. Um, also, in the case of Manuel de Falla, uh, uh, which uh, had to go to, to Argentina later, and Isaac Albeniz, uh, who died in Paris later. So all of these composers share the similarity of having to go for many reasons. I think of those composers now in, a, in an extremely, uh, in a human way also. We tend to think about these composers like uh, yes, they wrote amazing music, but they also had so many everyday problems and uh, they were forced to take a lot of the decisions that you know, everything might not have been a success for them. I felt that connection with all of them. It's like they all ran themselves in a table and tried and, and, and wrote a lot of the music. It, it's, it's amazing how um, a feeling uh, and you know, a way to express your feeling can shape the music. Because even though they came from different uh, backgrounds and stories, I feel that they all have something to share uh, as individual but as a collective too. that with um, um, a work that I played by Julian de la Chica as well, I think that closes the idea uh, of, of Exilio, Julian being a composer from the 21st century, living in New York, that, that I know that I share uh, a lot of moments with him as well. Um, I feel that it's a very nice uh, of a journey from Colombia, from all of these stories and arriving to the present in New York City. Me, me, me tocó mucho. Sí. Me fui a de Dios. Wow. I like it. Yeah, I really, I really like it. it sounds really good. The piano is so beautiful, though. It's, it's very. Ahí va la historia de Calvo. Y ya viene la historia de Calvo ahí. Sí. I I was uh, you know introduced and, and and told the story by Julian de la Chica. Uh, Julian uh, is a very uh, intellectual, you know, intelligent composer and a dear friend of mine uh, who was introduced to me uh, by my former teacher in Cuba, Leonardo Hell. They are also collaborated together in the past. Uh, the whole idea came from uh, Julian's work on. On, on a book that he wrote and an opera that he's currently writing about a town in Colombia uh, named uh, Agua de Dios. Uh, I found it very interesting because uh, he told me about a composer that lived there uh, named Luis Antonio Calvo. The underlying story that he was in 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 exile in that city, uh, and, you know, even inside of Colombia. Being a composer that was uh, pretty much like forced to, to 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 be in that in that town that pretty much you know died there, 
and I wrote most of his music there um, filled with very uh, an intricate feelings uh, I don't know a sort of a sadness but also hope so many uh, encounter feelings um, I was pretty much hooked. I, I thought, wow, this is an amazing story. I'm looking forward to know more about the composer. With the help of Julian also, we came to the conclusion that uh, even though he was uh, um, a turn of the century composer, 19th to 20th century, um, we tend to interpret them as romantic composers or, or um, from Europe as well. We, we have that tradition and uh, uh, Julian's ideas uh, that he transmitted me, I, I felt that we could play that composer in a very special and, and unique way, really showing and emphasizing the sadness and the solitude that I felt uh, in his music. I feel such a complexity there that is uh, some sparks of happiness, but in the end, it's not black and white. It was very difficult, um, but that was the heart of the of the album. That I, I was hooked to the story. So ex Exilio uh, from Calvo, it it came from that idea of playing. I think it makes a complete sense. I, I felt immediately a personal connection with uh, that uh, um, austerity and modern life. Uh, I'm currently 24 years old living in New York. It's such a complex and, and uh, environment and you are, are uh, with all of this information, new information, artistic and social and uh, that is coming to you every day. So. Why not to reflect that in, in Calvo's music? Why not to reflect a personal um, exile uh, in, uh, with his exile and the music? And uh, we felt that we could have that twist. In, in this case, uh, Julian's ideas uh, coming from the minimal point of view made such a difference. From there, we started considering ideas that had to do, of course, with the Colombian folk with how some rhythms could shine more than others. So maybe some things about the pedal, the treatment of the pedal that we are used to play, sometimes maybe or playing in romantic periods. kind of the image I, I, I envision with Julian with Calvo and I think that it was definitely a challenge playing this music because it was uh, it was really breaking with many patterns and, and and things that you already take for granted when it comes to piano playing and music. connection that I feel with Calvo um, Exile, uh, myself in the present uh, in New York. And uh, also I think that it gives an a interesting twist uh, when someone that is not from Colombia is interpreting the music. Uh, I feel that it gives uh, Calvo and the music pretty like mostly uh, a, a fresh approach with the, uh, your ears and, 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 and the musicality. And uh, also the fact that I didn't listen to any of the recordings also uh, gives more room to uh, my imagination and creativity on how to play the music. I think it's important in every every piece that I, I, I work on, I try not to listen to the recordings. In 
not being conditioned also with the memories or, or, or as childhood in Colombia, I'm able to bring something new. It could be, uh, I mean, it could be likable or not, but it's something completely new and, and pretty fresh to the music. So I think that being uh, uh, from Cuba and not being in Colombia and not living in Colombia gives a, 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 a completely new idea of what Caldo could be. was a very uh, uh, it was a beautiful experience to hear it and I really feel touched with the piece it's a, it's a song by Julian um, um, originally composed for quintet and, and voice for, for a string quartet piano voice uh, but that I really felt a very uh, uh, intense connection with that song it talks about Cuba about what it is to say um a goodbye to Cuba, to your roots and everything, and what a, a, a way to do it, because my wife uh, uh, is a mezzo-soprano, his name is El Rosario Armas, and we made a sort of an arrangement of the song where uh, we used the minimal approach that Julian was actually trying to tell us a lot, which is a show that he had. Um, I felt that the song has what Cuba represents, which um, is the joy and the resilience um, um, and the hope of the people trying to um, enjoy life in spite of the everyday problems and struggles. I think that is you. Having the memories of my childhood in Cuba playing the piano and then having my wife singing the song in a fresh way, with Julian conception, it really made a, 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 a difference. Uh, and I feel that I discovered like a part of Cuba in a way with the song. Uh, I'm not used to play um, 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 in that style. I even thought that the composer, you know, was Cuban at some point because it, it talks so much about that, of the feeling of going away and saying goodbye. Entonces la visión con todo, pues, con todo esto es de qué manera podemos pensar eh, pues, en Cuba y de qué maneras podemos buscar eh, pues, pues, esperanza y podemos buscar eh, la posibilidad de, de evolución y re 
reconocer qué es lo que pues, se puede cambiar o mejorar. En este caso creo que pues es, esa es la forma en la que yo vivo el exilio. Y mi manera de hacerlo pues, en cierto modo es eh, buscar una especie de homenaje y buscar un reconocimiento pues a todas estas personas de, de Cuba que, que a pesar de todas estas cuestiones políticas son gente que, que forma y son gente que prepara eh, en ese sentido mis profesores de música de Cuba son personas que con las que eh, intento estar en comunicación tienen algo siempre muy interesante que decir desde la perspectiva de estar en Cuba y ellos se retroalimentan desde la perspectiva del cubano fuera de Cuba. Con todo esto, eh, pues sí, hago un statement de la realidad tan dura como es. Y con esta mirada al futuro, lo que yo espero de mi país y lo que anhelo es que estos traumas dejen de existir y que, y que las personas tengan la oportunidad de poder realizar sus sueños y llevar una vida pues en su país, sin, sin el peso de un exilio en los hombros. Tener la oportunidad eh, básicamente de evolucionar como país de otra manera. Esta fue.